Hi, I'm Denise Burke, and welcome to another workshop by Virtual Leadership Camp. Today's workshop is about photography. I've always loved photography. Even when I was a kid, I had a camera, and back then we had to develop the film. So we would buy the film from the local drugstore, put the film in the camera, take photos at events. I was always the one taking photos at, at all the various events. I loved it. And then I would take the film down to a local photo shop that would develop it. And I'd have to wait about a week or two, go pick up the photos, take a look and see how I did. Nowadays, of course, we all have phones and most kids also have phones or access to a parent's phone if a parent will let them use it for taking photos. So today's photography workshop is appropriate for children and teenagers, so kids of all ages and adults can um, enjoy and practice taking good photos. So to start for youth ages five to 10, the activity I would suggest in starting to take photos is making it a bit of a game. It's also a great way either to learn something um, for the younger kids to learn colors. So with colors, the younger kids can take your phone or again with parent permission, parent's phone, or if you have a camera to go out into your local environment, whether it's on a walk or in your backyard or in your house and take photos of different colors parent can list the colors or you can list the colors and then go around and find objects of those colors and take photos of them. In addition, while you're taking photos of them, make sure that you do not move the camera too much. You want to keep it as still as possible so your photos are clear and not blurry. You want to try to get a good unique image of that item. It doesn't have to be the whole item. Sometimes it can be a corner of it. And um, be creative. Another game for children ages five to 10 is to go around and find items that start with the first letter of your name. So my name is Denise. I'd head out into the environment looking for things that start with a D. Another fun activity is taking your whole name and finding objects for letters of each letter of your name. So in my case, Denise, I'd find an object that was a D, maybe a picture of a dog, and then E, go find something. I actually have a little knickknack elephant I could take a picture of, and then N, and you get the idea. So go out into your environment and take pictures using your name. Now for children 10 and older, but also younger kids can then step up into composition. You start to apply the photography composition model, and whether it's taking pictures of people or taking pictures of nature or just objects. You want to be um, creative. Remember that there's no wrong picture. You're practicing and sometimes you can get an amazing work of art from taking a photo yourself. And I've taken Im images that I have taken and blown them up into um, wonderful artwork that's on my walls. I've also painted some of my own pictures that I've taken. I'm going to show you a display of different types of pictures. But when you're taking pictures in your environment, have fun and practice. The only way you're gonna know what looks good in a photo is just to take your camera or your phone and just start taking pictures out and about. Also taking pictures of people, it takes practice. Um, I know many adults that have a hard time taking pictures. Um, there, I know people when we're at an event that we say, no, 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 you're not taking the picture because they always cut everyone's heads off. So what you want to do in composition, whether you're taking pictures of family or friends, or again, nature, is be aware of the lighting. If the lighting isn't right in one angle, try a different angle. Same thing with taking a composition of people's faces. If people's faces are blurred or shadowed, the lighting is not great. In addition, if the images of the heads are down at the bottom of the frame, you really don't get a good picture of them at this event or at this activity. You really want to try to capture great photos where the photo really exemplifies the space or the event. With nature, I love nature. Nature is a fun place to start taking photos, whether it's of trees, of leaves, of flowers, of grass. So I'm going to display some photos that I've taken just out and about on local walks, as well as some while I've gone for a drive. Take a look at some of the, po the pictures that I've taken and start practicing today. As soon as possible, you can start taking photos and then 
please share. Feel free to comment with a photo or send me a photo. I'd love to see some of the photos that you've taken. Um, uh, and just mostly have fun. I, I just love taking pictures and as the more I've practiced and the better I've gotten, it's just really exciting to see some of the images I've taken and they really capture the places and spaces that I've been in that I love. So have fun with photography. And again, no matter what age you are, you can get practicing and you can make it a game. No matter what age you are, you can also make it a game. If it means that you're getting out and practicing, you can take a day and practice taking pictures of people in your family. You can take a day and practice taking pictures of pets. Um, and then you can certainly on your walk, take a picture of nature. So have fun with photography. And I'm gonna flash some images after this of different types of photos. Hi again. So the last couple of photos that were shown were ones to demonstrate photos gone wrong. Either the angle wasn't correct and or um, the, the camera was moving and blurry. So for, sort of like a video as well. Like um, right now I'm trying to hold this as still as possible, but imagine if you're like moving it all over the place, right? Like that. Well, when you're taking a photo and the camera's not still, it's going to be blurry. Um, as well as if you're taking the photo and you didn't compose it properly. Um, so take a look at your photos. And the wonderful thing about our phones as cameras is that you can delete. You can take 20 pictures of one thing and then take a look and see which is the best shot, the best lighting, the most still, not blurry. And the creativity behind the photo, what the photo was, was meant for, meant to display, whether it's artistic or something fun or a family event. Take a look now at photos that are better composed and um, have, di you know, have different displays of nature, of color, and of people. Take a look. Take a look around at other people's photography. You can look online to get an idea of the kind of photography you like and the kind of photography that inspires you. You can also try to emulate some of that photography. That's wonderful because you can practice by using other people's inspiration to inspire you. In addition, um, I recommend that you just get practicing. So for this workshop, take at least 50 photos. Um, I would recommend a hundred, but let's start with 50. Um, and with that, at least two to three of different things. So if you're taking a, a picture of flowers, take it from three different angles. If you're taking a picture of the ocean, several different angles. So that by the time you have 50, you've got different angles of some of the same locations or same items. And walk into your backyard or a park um, a trail, even local trees. You get some really good pictures of things that are just around your environment. And then with practicing with people, again, it's an art. So try to take at least two to three sh photos of a person or a family. Let's say you're taking them at your family dinner. Um, get a couple different shots so you can see what lighting was best, um, what highlighted all the occupants the best. Make sure that nobody's heads are cut off and that they really fill the photo frame. Get practicing and have fun with your photography skills.